everybody, welcome back to City Sowers. I'm planting peppers. So this is our sweet pepper bed, and I've got five different kinds of peppers that I'm cramming in. So I've got, let's see, guat peppers, quadrado de asti rosso peppers, etuda bell peppers, lesia peppers, and corbachi peppers. And we actually even have yet another type of sweet pepper, but I don't have space in here for it, so I have to figure out where I'm putting it. It's a beautiful day out, but it is overcast and it's actually starting to sprinkle a little bit. So I'm trying to get these in the ground so they can get some natural watering before, you know, it gets to raining so hard that I can't be out here. But these peppers have really needed to come out. So at this point, we're still getting kind of low temperatures for peppers. Peppers kind of really want to be above 55 degrees. We're getting a little lower than that, but I'm just, they gotta go out. I'm getting concerned about some of them. So they're out. If they stunt, so be it. They'll still produce fruit. And I'm gonna be aware for next spring to just go ahead and start them in like February or even March. Even though our uh, last frost date is in February, since they want that warmer temperature, I would rather just wait until I have that temperature since I have a long enough growing season. Instead of trying to force them out early and then they stunt, and take forever to do anything. So that's my plan. So this is an awesome birthday gift that my husband and my daughter got me. It says crazy goat lady. Feels like that's totally me. In homage to the shirt. Go look at that baby goat and his mommy. keeping me company out here. I have a bucket of bunny poop. Um, so half, I mean not half the reason, but a large part of the reason that we got the rabbits is so that we could have access to their poop. So I've got a bucket. This is all just Arthur's poop actually. But, uh, so I've got a bucket of bunny poop. It does uh, have like some of his hay in there that has fallen through. But honestly, that's gonna break down and add nutrients as well. So I'm not super worried about um, filtering it out or um, sifting it out. So what I'm doing is I dig the hole down a little bit deeper than I need it to be and put just a handful of poop down in the hole and uh, scoop a little bit of dirt over it um, just because I feel like the roots might have a hard time with all the air that's gonna be around all of these spherical little poops. So I put a little bit of dirt on top of it to kind of allow those roots to come down into it. Uh, and then put your plant in the hole and plant it as you normally would. Um, so I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen this year having the rabbit manure in the garden. If things are gonna just explode with growth and do great, or if it's just gonna be like, meh. But, uh, so yeah, this is an exciting experimental year for me got different methods and techniques and new fertilizers and trying to fix deficiencies and so we're gonna see how it goes so when you do your soil tests I tend to just lean more towards the quick and easy fix uh, throwing some kind of you know garden chemical in miracle, uh, grow. miracle grow something uh, and that would be like the that would be the easy fix that's how you do it you know well that's not uh, how you fix that's how you slap a band-aid. Okay, so if you don't want to do a band-aid, what would you do to like, I don't know, fix a nitrogen problem or some of the problems that you've seen? And is this rabbit poop going to do that? Well, the rabbit manure is what's called a cold manure. And that is because it is, um, 
it has nitrogen in it, but it's not so nitrogen hot that you'll burn your plants. Um, so it's something that can be used immediately. It doesn't have to be composted. Um, so, I mean, adding things like composted manure or, you know, fresh rabbit manure or even al alpacas also are known for having a cold manure. I would imagine llamas do too, since they're kind of the same thing almost. I mean, they're very similar. But um, you can do composted manure. Uh, there's um, alfalfa pellets. I've actually got some of those out here that I put out before it rained the other day. I'm going to try those. These are um, kind of a slow release method. Um, I've also put some blood meal down a couple inches below the top layer here, um, which is high in nitrogen. That'll help fix the nitrogen deficiency. Um, so, I mean, there's different methods to go about it organically and naturally. Of course, the other method would be to throw chemicals on it, chemical fertilizers. But honestly, that's not really going to be a long-term fix. You're going to have to reapply regularly because the way that those work is that, yes, they're readily available to the plant, but they don't stay in the soil. They just wash out the next time it gets watered. So um, I'm hoping to try and fix this organically, naturally. And honestly, I don't wanna be eating chemicals when I'm harvesting the food out of here. I don't have a problem, honestly, using um, miracle Grow or whatever in like the flower beds, but I don't have any strict flower beds. Everything is a mixed bed. So I just try to do everything organically. Say hi to your adoring public. Oh, you're adoring public. That's right. You're the camera, the camera goat. <laughs> that is so attractive. So Teddy is nine days old today. Huh, little man. He actually is due to get disbudded which we will not be able to film um, because I don't have the equipment myself and I'm actually gonna be learning this year. So maybe next year we'll be kind of showing you that ourselves. But um, my goat mentor asked that we respect your privacy. So we're not gonna get any footage of him being disbutted. Um, but he is doing great. He's spoiled rotten. He's awesome about being held. He loves being scratched. Um, Betsy is doing really good. She, for only having a singleton, she's producing a lot of milk. So actually I have been milking her uh, in the late mornings, just making sure that, you know, baby's full, he doesn't need it, and her udder is actually feeling kind of full. So instead of leaving it and letting her production drop due to low demand, I've started just milking her out and milking out that excess. And she's doing great. She's given me, I think, a pint. Um, at each milking which considering the fact that she's not like all the way full because we're not holding the baby back yet um, she's producing a lot for a singleton baby so I'm really really pleased with her this year hi Betsy he is so cute <laughs> Yeah, he's not spoiled at all. He doesn't get <laughs> hardly ever snuggled or held or scratched. I lie. <laughs> hey everybody, so it's actually two days later because yesterday was all overcast and raining. But Mr. Teddy here got his horns disbudded uh, this morning. And actually, I did it myself, which was nerve wracking and terrifying, but I did it. Um, and he's he's fine i mean he settled down really fast after it it all went pretty smooth um and as you can see he doesn't seem to be too super bothered he's still still my little chill man but now he's gonna have hopefully no horns um basically time is gonna tell if he's gonna grow horn skurs uh both of his older brothers from betsy's uh babies last year um, both had to be re, uh, re-ironed or whatever you want to call it, redone with the disbudding, um, which can be a genetic factor, which, um, both of the boys last year had, um, basically their horn bud growth pattern was not perfectly round. They were kind of more of a teardrop shape which the iron, when you disbud them, is round. So if they're teardrop shaped, 
sometimes you can get horn skirts that come back and you're gonna have to um, redo them and so we're gonna see what's gonna happen with this guy he may or may not grow horns but he's he did really good he uh, he calmed down really fast and even when I got him home he was like no I'm good I don't need mom I don't need a nurse so he's a little rock star hi teddy see that's the good stuff so a question that frequently comes up uh particularly in the city where not a lot of people have goats is why do you just butt a goat that seems cruel and mean and why would you want to hurt them fact of the matter is that it's really for their safety like a goat that has horns uh can hurt a person if they if they headbutt them but also, uh, goats that have horns are known to get their heads stuck in fences. And if a person isn't there to help them, that can end really, really badly for the goat. So it's for their safety. And also goats with horns, if they are housed with other goats, can end up injuring even other goats. Uh, I, I know someone who had a horned goat housed with a not horned goat and the uh, horned goat um, actually ended up seriously injuring the other goat. Now this little guy is going to be weathered, which means he'll be castrated, so he'll end up being somebody's pet goat one day. And if he's gonna go to a family that has children or things like that, you really want them to be safe and not have horns. It doesn't hurt very long when they're being disbudded because you're burning through those nerves. <laughs> um, so once you've gone through the nerves, it doesn't really hurt them anymore. They're kind of more just scared about being um, restrained. And so it's over quickly and it doesn't hurt very long. I mean, he'll have some residual soreness, but he has had some pain medication and he's got mom and he'll be fine. He'll be acting normal pretty quick. Hey, Teddy, what are you doing? Hey, little boy. Mom. So, little guy is doing fine. He's been trying to headbutt my hand and all that because he doesn't have any siblings to play with. But see, he's rubbing it all over my hand. And he was disbutted this morning. And he seems to be just fine. <laughs> Teddy, come on, <laughs> come on little goat. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today on getting a little bit of garden stuff done. <laughs> getting some, getting a baby goat disbudded. Oh, little man. We're just sitting out here listening to the birds and playing with the baby and just kind of enjoying the springtime and listening to the chickens in the background. <laughs> but as always, this is your urban nerd with a goat herd telling you you can grow where you're planted. Yes, and especially if you're a baby goat. Oh, my shoulder's a pillow. Yeah, you are your mother's son. <laughs>